out on the peaks wind, 1.4 kilometers, heavy, heavy waves. It is three minutes past 10 here in the morning, four hours and three minutes after they set up, and they are neck and neck and neck out at the front of the field there. This is not an extreme triathlon, this is not an adventure race, this is the sport of swim run, which was born here in the Stockholm archipelago. If you look at the size of that wave, I mean, essentially you'd want to be reaching for your surfboard here rather than anything else. 26 islands, 75 kilometers, 52 transitions from the water to the land and back again. There were moments when we thought we were not going to finish. As it came across the open water, the, the waves were getting choppy and there were white horses. Swim run. Yeah, this is like the hottest sport that's growing in America in my neck of the woods. In other words, the type of stuff that I like to do. Swim run is relatively new to the even way back when. I mean, when I did it in Otello, uh, the Swim Run World Championships in Sweden back in 2015, that was the 10 year anniversary. It had already been around since 2005. Mao and the Anderson brothers, they all went out. It started off as a drunken bed. So these four guys are sitting around in Mao's, uh, at the, the, the resort on Utah, which is an island in the Swedish archipelago. And they are sitting around drinking and they have their bar napkins out. The bar napkins are actually maps of the Swedish archipelago. And what they did was they're sitting there drinking, like most fun sports to start off as a drunk event. They're sitting there going, you know what? I bet the two of us can be the two of you from here to here, which was from the island of Utah to the island of Sandham. 26 islands, six miles of swimming total, and 41-ish miles of running total from Utah to Sandham. And they took off and did it. And thus was born the sport of swim run. So it's not something new to the world, it's new to the US. Now here in the US, we've got a handful and they're growing. There's more being put on the calendar day by day. And there's different groups that are put on series of events. So there's definitely plenty to choose from. Now I've done Otolo, which is a swim run world championship with my buddy Dan. Him and I also did uh, Rockman in Norway, which we're going back to do again this year. Uh, we've also done uh, Casco Bay, which we're going back to do again this year. And I've also done with a couple of other partners, such as Keith Schumann and Caleb Beatty, I've done Swim Run Virginia twice. I've done Swim Run NC twice, uh, Swim Run Catawba. And this year I've got a bunch of races on the calendar. Give you a little bit of a, uh, of a tidbit here because I started off with talking about Otolo, which is the Swim Run World Championships, is the creme de la creme, the coup d'etat of, of swim run races because it was A, the very first one, and B, it was it is the World Championship. So with that said, um, I don't want to scare anyone or, or make anyone seem a little overwhelmed that not all these swim runs are going to be six miles of swimming and 41-ish miles of, of running and different races are based upon those venues. So you might have some that are run heavy. You might have some that are swim heavy. You might have some that are have lots of climbing. You might have some that are relatively flat. You might have some that are very, very technical. You might have some that are not. So it really depends on the venue. One of the things that has come about with the initial creation of Swim Run, and if you talk to the race directors of Otolo, such as Michael Emmel, They'll tell you this is all about connecting with nature. Having you and your teammate connect with nature, you'll see that it's not gonna be as cut, cookie cutter as triathlon is. So when someone asks you, well, what's the distance of swim run? It really depends on the race. Well, what kind of pace do you, someone asked me this this morning, so this is a great, great example. So we created a, a we started a swim run training session at our master's class, MSA Masters. We started the first one this morning, and on the run, um, someone asked me, what kind of pace do you guys maintain during the race? And I just chuckled, because it really depends on the race. It, it, it's not a, a style of racing where you can just go out and say, I'm gonna hold a 6.30 pace for the next five miles. That's not the way it works. The pace is gonna be dictated on the terrain. How technical is it? 
and then also how flat is it. You might be able to hold a certain pace on the road portion, but you're not going to be able to hold that pace during the technical running aspects. Don't get hung up on the fact of there's one kind of cookie cutter like thing that you can go, oh, I'm going to do a sprint triathlon, or oh, I'm going to do a Olympic triathlon, or I'm going to do a half marathon, a half Ironman, or I'm going to do a... It's not like that. A swim run is nothing like you've experienced before. I don't care if it's the SOS try, which is probably the closest that I can think of. Um, I don't care if you've done 50Ks. I don't care if you've done Xterras. I don't care if you've done Iron Man. You're not going to experience anything like this. So, A, the nature aspect of it is key. you got to go into it with that's what your, your one of your goals should be so that you can enjoy it. The other aspect is, is that when the Anderson brothers and Mom and those guys, they all created the race, they went together as a team. And they did that for a couple of different reasons, but one of the primary reasons why they did that was, hell, they're swimming in the Swedish archipelago through shipping lanes in cold, cold water because they're close to the Baltic Sea. They needed to, to go as a team for safety. So <laughs> you get out there in the middle of the ocean you might have an issue. If you have an issue, you've got somebody with you. So it started off as a safety aspect, and what they found later on, racing with someone and experiencing that race with them is key to the enjoyment of this sport. I've heard a lot of folks that I've talked to about it before and I've, and I've suggested that they try it. They always go, I don't, I don't want to get a partner. I don't want to be held back by a partner I, I don't, I'm not fast enough to be able to, to race with a partner. All these things are excuses and, and complaints about having to find a partner for this racing as if it is a barrier and it's not. You have to realize that that's one of the key things that makes this sport so great is being able to experience that with someone. You're constantly moving with this partner, experiencing this race with this partner. And it's a one-on-one -on -one type of a relationship. Find someone that A, you'd love to spend a lot of time with, B, that you can get along with, and C, someone that is around the same ability as you uh, or that complements you as far as your swimming and running capabilities go. So it's a team sport, not a relay format, but a team format of where you have to stay together with your partner within 10 meters. The other aspect is, or other rule, one of the key important rules is, you can use whatever equipment you want without any restrictions with one exception and that exception is your flotation you can use paddles you can use a swim buoy you can use fins but you have to carry it with you the entire race so it's not like oh I'm going to use the fins for this first leg and then I'm going to ditch them no you have to carry all this with you for the first uh, for the entire duration of the race the other aspect is or the one exception um, to that rule of you can use whatever you want is there are some size limitations to the flotation. So <laughs> back in one of the first Otelos, they actually took like a swim raft, like, like what you would lounge around in the pool on, like a little mattress kind of thing. And these guys got on this thing and paddled it like they were doing like a surfboard um, and, and won the race. And they, they do feel that that was probably one of the advantages that they had. So after that race, they, they added a rule that there's some size limitations to the flotation that you can use. Um, but a lot, most experienced and successful, that's key, mostly experienced and successful swim runners use paddles and pool buoy. Uh, in addition to the normal gear like a, your swim cap, your goggles, uh, your wetsuit, your shoes. The wetsuits are, there's a lot of companies out now that have a swim run specific wetsuit. And then shoes, typically something you're going to wear throughout the duration of the race. Uh, because what you'll find is, is that you'll want to be able to just swim in those shoes, get out and run in those shoes. So you want something that kind of trains for a little bit. To recap, we've got a swimming and running multiple legs so that you are run, swim, run, swim, run, swim, run, swim. It's not an aquathon. It's not a triathlon without a bike. It's not an adventure race. It's a succession race of swimming and running you're doing it with a teammate, and that teammate has to stay with you the entire race within 10 meters. And you can use whatever type of gear or aids that you like with 
some limitations on the uh, size of your flotation devices. There are a bunch of races. I'll just name out a couple of them. Uh, in the U.S., there is Swim Run Casco Bay, which I think is a, a great race with two different distances. One of the tougher races. It's one of the ones that I think is closest to uh, Otolo, simply from a similar kind of temperatures. Uh, you'll also get that island to island to island kind of hopping. So I think that makes it a lot closer to Otolo. It's not as technical as Otolo and definitely not as long. Um, so you got Swim Run Casco Bay, you got Swim Run North Carolina, which is at Hanging Rock State Park. I think uh, that race is definitely a runner's race because it's 14 ish miles of running uh, straight up uh, Moore's Wall to uh, so quite a bit of, of technical rock climbing with 600 steps that you've got to go up and then you got to descend that back down. There's about 3,000 meters or so of swimming, so it's it's a little more geared towards the runner. Starts and stops at a pub, which is always good. And then you've got Swim Run Virginia. Uh, Swim Run Virginia is, I think it's kind of equal as far as swimming and running. Uh, as far as, a, I don't think it's one way or the other as far as heavy to swimming or heavy to running. That one is a point-to-point -point race that uh, you end up traveling in and out of the, the James River down through uh, Richmond, Virginia. You finish right at the base of the city. Beautiful, uh, beautiful venue. Lots of rock scrambling in the, in the James River. That's a good one. Uh, you've got Swim Run Catawba at the U.S. National Whitewater Center. That one is right in my backyard. That's a great race. Uh, they're working out the course as I speak. Uh, you've got Swim Run Maryland coming up, Swim Run Boston. Both of those are going to be some, some fun events. There's one in Rhode Island, Swim Run Rhode Island. There's Crawl Man down at Yargo State Park in uh, right outside of Winder, Georgia. Winder? 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 However they say it down there. Winder, Winder Georgia. And then you've got uh, San Juan Islands, which is not San Juan, Puerto Rico, but San Juan Islands off the coast of, sea of uh, Seattle. There is, let's see, am I forgetting one? Oh, uh, so we've got Swim Run Lake James, which is also in North Carolina. Hey, North Kakalaki. And I think that's about all I can think of right now. If I missed one, somebody yell at me, okay? So that's the introduction to Swim Run. And it's so funny that whenever I talk with folks that try it out for the first time, before they get into it, they're like, oh, you know, I've done Ironman, I'm good to go. We should be able to blow this thing out of the water. Or, oh, I've done 50Ks, I'm good. Or, oh, I'm a great trail runner, I'm good. Or, oh, I'm a great pool swimmer, I'm good. And then they get into this sport with some preconceived ideas of what, what it's all about, but until they experience it, every single person that I've talked to both before and after have all come out with the same thing. That was nothing like what I thought it was gonna be, and it was awesome. And, and I'm, I'm not kidding, every single person that I've talked to that have gotten into the sport and then done it, I'll admit that even though they've watched the videos, they've seen pictures, They've talked to people about it. They've talked to experienced racers about it. It still ended up being an experience that they couldn't wrap their head around until they actually did it. And so, if you're thinking about doing swim run, gather as much information as you can from experienced people, but keep an open mind until you actually, actually do it. Because I'm pretty sure you'll find out that it's fun, it's exciting, it's hard as hell, and it's something that you'll probably want to do more than once.